Hi, how you doing? Welcome to Bible Surfing Tuesday. I'm so glad you joined us for service this evening. How was your Christmas? I'm sure you had a beautiful, lovely Christmas celebration with your family and friends. And we are so grateful to God that we are here the last Tuesday of the year. That means God has massive and great plans for us for the new year. And that is why this January, I'm going to pray a lot of prayers. We're going to find out those things that God has in mind for us to accomplish for his kingdom, for our family and for ourselves. That is why today I'll be teaching on the different kinds of prayers. And it's going to be a great, great, great teaching this evening with the help of the Holy Spirit. So that when you start praying in January, you will know the kind of prayer that you need to pray for the kind of requests, dreams, goals, vision, aspirations, desires that you have. The Bible says that we ask and we don't receive because we ask amiss. And one of the ways we miss our miracles, we miss the answers to our prayers is because we are praying the wrong kind of prayer for the right kind of request. So we're going to solve that today with the help of the Holy Spirit. So I'm so, 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 so looking forward to today's teaching. Share this link. Invite your friends, invite your families to join us. God has a word for them today. Trust me. A lot of people are not getting answers to their prayers because of this. So share this link right now. Invite your friends. Tell them, please, take out 30 minutes of your time and listen to this message. It might just change your life. Do it now. Do it now. Copy the link, the YouTube link, the Facebook link. Share it to all your Facebook groups. Share it to all the groups you belong to in uh, WhatsApp. And tell them, say, please, listen to this for 30 minutes. It will change your life in 2022. Trust me. They will thank you later for it. Sweet Holy Spirit, I invite you. I can do nothing on my own. I have got nothing, absolutely nothing to say to your people this evening. But you do. You do. I ask that your word comes clear, simple, concise. So that your word, as simple as it is, the Bible says, it is a hammer that breaks that shatters every mountain of ignorance, every mountain of deception, every mountain that has raised and exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Let your word do its work as it is sent this evening. It must bring miracles, clarity, and direction in the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. The types of prayers. And when we look, we're going to be looking at about 13 or 14 of them today. So I'm going to be very fast. And I hope you don't mind my speed. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. <laughs> this is Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. And this is as immediately after he has spoken to them about putting on the whole armor of God. Still speaking about the armor of God, he talked about this. So this means this is part of the armor. A lot of us stop at the shield of faith, thinking that is where it all ends. Yes, above all, above all, including this, of course, take up the shield of faith. Because what I'm going to talk to you about, which is prayers, without faith will not work. We've sung a song for years in Africa that prayer is the key, prayer is the key. And this is correct. Prayer is a key. But the second part of that song is wrong. They now say that prayer is the master key. That is wrong. Though prayer is the key, it's not the master key. Prayer on its own cannot unlock every door. It can unlock some doors, but not all doors. What is key is the faith. Faith. When you pray without faith, you will not get results. Don't even bother. <laughs> That's how I just finished a series 
on the seven steps to answer prayer. So go to our podcast and listen to those messages. It will also change your lives. Totally to change your life. Prayer is a key, but it's not a master key. What drives everything with God is faith. God wants us to trust him and have faith in him, believing that he's strong, able, and willing to do the things that we've come to him for. And that's what he wants. So faith in God is the key. So when you pray, like James said, the prayer of faith. Oh my God. Everything you make thy request, every request you make, everything you ask for, will come to pass. So Paul in continuation of the armor that we need to wear as a Christian in verse 18 it says praying always, not sometimes praying frequently what? he says all praying always with all prayer and supplication all prayer and supplication in the spirit so all prayer means there are several kinds of prayers. That's why I'm running this series. All prayer. So we need to know the different kinds of prayer so we'll know which one to pray for each situation. Are you with me? Glory be to God. Now the first kind of prayer I'm going to talk about, which I've already mentioned, is the prayer of faith. James chapter 5, verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the one that is sick. The prayer of faith is not only required when you are praying for the sick. The prayer of faith is required whenever you are praying any kind of prayer. Any kind. Any kind. So that's why we've spoken so much in the past few weeks about faith. Because without faith, your prayers will not be answered. All right, and then put it this way. Without faith, you will not receive answers to your prayers. Because God has done it all for us. The problem is not with God. The problem is with us. We are not receiving what God has already done. And it is faith that energizes and powers the, us with the ability to receive what God has done. So the prayer of faith, very important. This is not one of the kind of prayer, but I like to mention this, that faith is important. Faith is what drives our prayer. So the first kind of prayer I'm going to talk to you about, number one, is the prayer of adoration and worship. Like I said, and I apologize again, I'm going to be a bit fast so I can cover the 13 of them in record time. The disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, teach us how to pray. And he told them that when you are praying, do, do this first. Say, say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So in that pattern of prayer that Jesus gave the disciples, he showed them that the first thing you need to do when you come to pray is to adore God. Very important. Very, very, very important. This is so important. So important. Adore God. Spend time in adoration. The bulk of my prayers when I pray privately is this. Is the prayer of adoration. Is the prayer of worship. In Acts, I think 13, they, they called it ministering to God. Acts 13, verse 2. The Bible says, as they ministered to God, as they were worshiping in prayers, as they were adoring God in prayers, God spoke to them. One of the ways you can hear from God is by carrying out this kind of prayers. It focuses on the worship of God out of love for Him, out of respect for Him, out of admiration from Him. These prayers come from a place of genuine awe of who God is. Of who God is. Not of what or the things He has done. There's a kind of prayer that talks about the things he has done. We're going to get there. But this is who God is. Just loving on God. This is a powerful prayer. In fact, praying this kind of prayer alone 
solves a lot of your problems that even pray. And that is the truth. Because when you worship an adult God, you 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 put him at a place where he is seeking for what he can do for you. I'm telling you. Kings do that. When you solve a king's problem, he's he's not comfortable. He will be looking for something that you need that he can solve. What, or a problem that you have that he can solve. Something you need that he can give you. He will make him uncomfortable when you do this. So this is a prayer we need to learn as Christians to pray more often than not. The second one is kingdom prayers. After he told them, hallowed be thy name, thy, the next thing he said is, pray that his kingdom come here on earth. God's kingdom is going to come here on earth. Oh, glory be to God. I'm excited about it. You know, we have a place, a planet, like I call it, where we call heaven at the moment. But the Bible tells us that very soon, earth will be heaven. That's why we have this phrase, like heaven on earth. That phrase will happen literally. The Bible tells us that it's going to happen in Revelations, where a new earth will come, a new heaven will come. And the Bible says that the God, the Father, will come and make his abode here with us. Here with us. And he will live here with us. And earth will now be referred to as heaven. I'm excited about that. So that is the literal fulfillment of that prayer. But before that literal fulfillment of that prayer, whenever we pray that God's kingdom come, it also means that we are asking for the expansion of God's kingdom here on earth, here and now. We are praying that more people come to the saving knowledge of Christ here and now. So when we pray for God's kingdom to come, now this is what we are praying for. We are praying that missionaries are sent. We are praying that funds are released into the mission field to get more people into God's kingdom. To get more people into the kingdom of heaven. So this is one of the things as believers we need to pray for. Don't only focus on your needs, your problem. Also focus on what makes God's heart beat. What makes God's heart beat our souls. So praying for the kingdom to advance is very important. The Bible says in Matthew 6 verse 10, Your kingdom come, your will be done. It says in Matthew 6 verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. So when you come praying, put your needs second or last. Put your own personal request. Relegate it. Seek for God's kingdom to come. Pray that his kingdom, his plans, his purposes are actualized here on earth. I need to hurry. The third kind of prayer I'm going to talk to you about is the prayer of agreement. This is one of the most powerful kinds of prayers in the Bible. Oh, very, very powerful. This prayer supersedes personal prayers. In fact, when you feel that your faith is failing, switch to this kind of prayer. Maybe you're going through something and your faith is failing. Let's say maybe you're sick and there is no strength, there's no faith in you trusting and believing God for a miracle very easy look for somebody that is a believer that is a person of faith that has the same what I said has like mind with you and ask that person to agree with you Jesus said where two or three shall I agree upon a matter it is established unto them powerful powerful it is established unto them. So this kind of prayer of agreement is also what we call corporate prayer. Once it's more than one person, it's corporate. Don't think corporate prayer is where you get the whole church to pray. No. Just link up with one believer. Bible says where two or three are gathered, Jesus is there. 
What makes this prayer powerful is that you've linked up with another believer, another part of the body of Christ, Jesus becomes present. So whatever you agree on, hallelujah, is given you. This is very, very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. I already quoted the scripture. So you find them for those that don't know where they are. Matthew 18, 19 to 20. And you will notice that the, the, the apostles, the early church, prayed these kind of prayers. When Peter was released by the angels from prison, the Bible says he went back to his own company. Hey! And they already prayed for his release. So he joined them and they prayed. They prayed kingdom prayer. The Bible says that where they were praying, they were shaking. Hey! Morale rata sinto kenkle kosa katas. Hey! Say they shaking. Corporate prayers. And we do this kind of corporate prayers every Wednesday and Friday. You need to join us. It's on Zoom. It's private. If you're interested in joining us, go to our website. The details are on the screen. Click on the chat bot at the bottom and tell us, indicate your interest. We're going to get back to you with the link. So you join us when we pray corporate prayers. It's awesome. In January, we are going to pray every day for I think the Holy Spirit will, will clarify that to me, but at least 10 days or two weeks every day apart from Sunday and, and, and Tuesday. Every day. Every day. And going to be corporate prayers. This is where you will bring all those, your plans, your purposes, your goals for the year, and we'll handle it under the corporate unction. Under the corporate unction. And you will see miracles in the coming year. If you believe that, type a big amen as a comment. Glory be to God. The fourth kind of prayer I'll talk to you about is the prayer of petition. This is the most popular prayer. In fact, most believers only pray this prayer. They don't know any other prayer to pray. <laughs> and it's understandable as a new Christian to pray this only this kind of prayer because this, you know, babies only cry when they need something for themselves. They don't care about you. I mean, they are so young, so, 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 so young, ignorant, that they don't know that any other person exists apart from the person feeding them. And as baby Christians, it's understandable. But as you grow and mature, you need to become more responsible and put your own needs or your needs, relegate them to the background. This is where you now start looking, focusing on other people. When you now start looking, focusing on the kingdom of God. You start understanding why God saved you. What plan he had when he saved you. And start doing something about those things, including prayers. So this is the most, this is the most popular kind of prayer. And it's, there's nothing wrong in it, with it rather. If this is what you pray always, it's fine. You know, Jesus told us to ask. So told us when that word ask is petition me. <laughs> Another word that is used interchange with it is supplication. So the is a prayer of petition or supplication. What is the prayer of petition or supplication? It simply means tendering your request to God, making a demand to God for your personal needs. And it is it is all right if you do that. And Jesus, like I said, told us to do that in John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. Jesus speaking, told his disciples, in that day, you will ask me nothing. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he, the Father, will do it for you. Glory be to God. That's petition the Father. He said, until now, You've not petitioned me. You've not asked me anything in my name. But after now, ask. <laughs> when I'm resurrected and I'm going back to heaven, ask. Because all power would have been given to me then. Say, so ask. And you shall receive that your joy might be full. Isn't God so sweet? God wants us to be full of joy. God wants us to be satisfied always. 
he wants to he wants he wants you to be delighted he, he wants he wants your needs met listen to me god wants your needs met more than you want it met i'm telling you that's why when i saw people telling themselves praying screaming yeah doing you know, all those things as if god is deaf uh, it bothers me because they don't understand god god wants your needs met more than you do just come in faith resting in him resting in his word and make your request and you will see miracles happen you know paul speaking to the philippians church in four in philippians 4 verse 6 says do not be anxious about anything i said in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. It's as simple as that. Relax. Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Rest in God like a child does. Make your request. Put your faith in Him. Put your faith in His Word and go your way. Start thanking Him and you will see those things happen and come to pass in your life. Like from that scripture we already talked about with thanksgiving. And that's the fifth kind of prayer. The prayer of thanksgiving. <laughs> this is one of the keys to the answered prayers. After you've prayed, take a corresponding action, handle the images of your mind. You're confessing, you're standing on the word. You now need to step into thanksgiving. It's the highest form of faith. When you thank God for what you are yet to have, but you believe you've received it, it's powerful. Very, very, very powerful. And it's a kind of prayer with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Thanksgiving focuses on what God has done, not what he's yet to do. I'll say that again. Thanksgiving focuses on what God has done, not what he's yet to do. That's why it's a powerful form of faith. You've not yet received it, but you believe it is done. And you start thanking God for it. Guess what? The speed. Angels will walk behind the scenes to ensure that you have those things. Will be swift, just like lightning. So you have it. The sixth kind of prayer is the prayer of consecration creation and dedication this is also a powerful kind of prayer this is a prayer where you lay your life to god this is a prayer where you hand your life to god this is where a prayer where you say god take me over i submit to you i submit to your plans and i submit to your purpose babes in 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 god don't understand this prayer they don't this is a prayer for mature responsible children of god they've gotten to a point where they know hmm, i'm here on earth for a reason i didn't just appear on earth on my own accord god sent me here for a reason i need to discover that reason which is my purpose when i do i need to submit to it so you consecrate your life you dedicate your life to that purpose so those are prayers gone into the call a prayer of dedication where people are called that come and rededicate your life to God. They misunderstand what that means. It's not coming to say, God, I want to be your child again. I'm going to serve you and follow you. Though it's part of it. But more than that, it is saying, Father, I am dedicating myself to your service. The reason why you sent me here on earth, use me to achieve it. And this is the exact prayer Jesus prayed. In the garden of gethsemane he said to the lord not my will but yours i submit to your plan yes it's difficult for me but i give in i submit to it use me accomplish your plans accomplish your purpose on earth i give all my will everything to your plans and purpose this is powerful this is powerful, powerful kind of prayer. And we need to learn to start praying this kind of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The next kind of prayer is the prayer of intercession. 
Ah, glory be to God. When we pray the prayer of petition, you just need to pray it once. You don't need to constantly pray, Father, give me, give me, give me, give me. Pray it once. Because when you pray the second time, the third time, the fourth time, you are annulling the previous prayers you've prayed. When you pray, Father, give me this, you're petitioning God for your needs and all that. You're, you're repeating it every day. You wake up, you repeat it. You're actually saying, Father, I don't really believe that you heard me the first time. I don't really believe you heard me the second time. I need to repeat it and repeat it because I didn't say it at night. I need to pray again the next morning. No, that is lack of faith. That is lack of faith. You pray the prayer of petition once. That's why Paul said, "We <laughs> do not be anxious, but we'll do what? Pray with supplication. You pray it once. The next prayer you need to step into after petitioning God is thanksgiving. Start thanking him for it. Start thanking him for it. You don't need to go back and petition him again. Because if you do, it's a sign that you didn't believe that he heard you. It's a sign of lack of faith. It's a sign that you are anxious, actually. As I said, do not be anxious. Be not anxious. Pray <laughs> with prayer and supplication. Then step into thanksgiving. I say that to explain intercession. Intercession is a bit different. Intercession is the prayer you keep on praying till you see the result. It's not like petition that you pray once and step into thanksgiving. Intercession, you keep on praying till you get the result. Now, what kind of prayers do you pray as intercession? It's simply coded in the word intercession. The word intercession means standing in the place of for someone else or for somebody else. So when you are praying the prayer of intercession, you're not praying for your own needs. That is petitioning. When you're praying intercession, you're praying for another person's need. They are praying for another people's needs. They are praying for maybe a people group, a country, or a nation, an organization. Somebody else. You are standing in place. So the Bible says, I'm looking for somebody that will stand in the gap. The man that stands in the gap, we call that person an intercessor. The woman that stands in the gap, we call her an intercessor. She's not praying for her need. She's standing between someone a group of people or a nation and God. It's like a bridge. So that bridge stays there, keeps praying, keeps standing until she or she sees the miracle. In petition, you don't need to have the miracle to believe that you've have it, that you've gotten it. But in intercession, you believe that you've gotten it, but you don't stop asking. You keep asking, you keep asking, you keep asking, you keep praying, 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 you keep reminding God, you keep reminding God till they have it. In petition, you pray once, you keep thanking, start thanking, start declaring the word till you receive it. By intercession, you keep praying. And a good example is when you are praying for the salvation of somebody. You have to keep praying because the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded their eyes. So you need to keep praying that light shines through that blindfolding. You keep praying that that blindfolding will tear and destroy. So the light of God will shine. You keep praying that God sends a laborer that will speak to that person. You keep praying that the heart of that person is prepared to receive the word of God. So you don't stop those prayers till the person gets saved. Or you hear that the person gets saved. I was in Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Say, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. Do not cease. So you don't stop praying for them. It's not you you are praying for. It's not your personal needs. You are praying for other people. Do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So the prayer of intercession can be prayed for unbelievers to get saved, can be prayed for Christians for them to grow in Christ. Paul speaking said, see, 
my beloved, who I travel again. Meaning he has prayed the first time, but he's praying the second time. And what is he praying for? He said, until Christ be formed in you. So he prayed the first time, the prayer of intercession, that they be saved. Now they are saved. He prayed the prayer of intercession that they will grow in Christ, that they will mature in Christ. And you don't stop till you see them grow in the full stature of Christ. Hallelujah. I need to hurry now. The eighth kind of prayer is prophetic prayer. And I'm going to split this into three. So I'm going to be fast. The first kind of prophetic prayer is what I call the prayer of imprecation. It's going to be on your screen. What is the prayer of imprecation? The prayer of imprecation simply means invoking God's judgment on a matter. <laughs> it's what people call praying against your enemies. It's popular in Africa. It's not, it's not popular here in, in, the, in the Western world, but in Africa it's very, very popular. After the prayer of petition, this is the second kind of prayer that is very popular because in, in our culture we believe that somebody else is responsible for what is happening to you, not you. So we, we point fingers like this at people. You are my problem. No, <laughs> but the truth is that when you point a finger at somebody, three of your fingers are pointing right back at you. Letting you know that you need to take responsibility for what is happening to you. But Africa, you say that nobody will listen to you because it must be somebody else and not me. So this kind of prayer is very, very, very popular. Fire burn my enemies, fall down and die. This, that, 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 blah, 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 blah. Now, there are a lot of um, theological, will I say, <laughs> conversation regarding this. As believers now, should we pray this kind of prayers? They will say, didn't our Lord Jesus tell us in Matthew chapter 5, that we should pray for our enemies. We should do good to them that hate us. We should love them. We should do this, that for them. Should we pray this kind of prayer for our enemies? And they have a point by saying that because these are direct words from Christ. We should love them. We should pray that good comes to them. We should actually go out and do good to them. <laughs> and all that. We should not pray this kind of prayers for them. And they will not be wrong. But as a preacher, I've learned to stay in the middle of the road. Mm. You won't see me tilt to this extreme. You won't see me tilt to that, this other extreme because I'm a Hagenite. And Ken Hagen, Papa, has taught us that the safest place to stay is in the middle of the road. I'm going to tell you why. Now, you read the Old Testament, you see all these prayers there. Actually, David prayed a lot of them. Uh, I don't know if I have time, but go look at um, Psalm 7. He prayed some heavy prayer. I talked about every pit that was dug for him, let the enemies fall into it. That any arrows that were shot at him, let God release arrows on them. He prayed a lot of prayers like that. He said a lot of it in the, in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus comes and tells us, hey, don't do this. You know, <laughs> um, says in the, the Old Testament, he says, an eye for an eye. Somebody slaps you, slap that person back. Somebody takes your eye, take an eye back from that person. I mean, that's payment. But in the New Testament, just says, oh, somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek for them to slap. That's a new way. That's a new way. To be honest, that's a new way. But like I said, I'm always in the middle of the road. Now, I read in Revelations. In Revelations. Now, when you read Revelations chapter 6, there were a group of Matthias that were praying this prayer. The Bible says in verse 9 of Revelation chapter 6, And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, these guys were under the altars, the souls, of them they were slain for the word of God, Matthias, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, 
holy and true, doth thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And the Bible says in verse 17 that God did. The Bible says, and the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So they prayed it, and it happened. And Revelations, like you know, is in the future. So this prayer, I believe, is ongoing right now. It's ongoing right now. So what is the balance? Jesus said, do good to your enemies. Love them. Pray for them. You know, show them kindness. He says, when you do this, when you do this, when you do this, the God of vengeance is activated. It is the exact thing. This is what we are praying. The matters are praying. Aren't you the just God? Aren't you the avenging God? Avenge us! Jesus told us how this is done. By doing good, praying for them. So when you do that, you heap coals of fire on their head. That means you activate judgment on them. And I believe this is what we should do as Christians. However, however, there are some people that are blatant in their, will I say, opposition to you. They are blatant. They are not hiding it. They are telling you, I will do this, I will do that to you. The Bible tells us that if you also keep quiet, <laughs> evil will come to you. That's what I'm talking about speaking. So when somebody is blatant that is going to do this and that to you, should you not start playing <laughs> the good guy doing good to them and all? Yes, you should. But don't end there. Don't keep silent. Open your mouth. Build first a wall of defense. So whatever arrows they fire will not come to you. Then, the Bible says that, all, Jesus speaks, he said, all power has been given unto me. He turned to his disciples, which includes you and I, and said to us, go in this power. So we have that power. Use that power, build a defense. And in that defense, <laughs> glory be to God, put what we call time bomb. What do I mean by that? I said, building that defense, people like put uh, minds all around a place of interest. So if enemies are coming, those minds will go off and kill them. Now, those minds, though they are, they're not really offensive weapons, they're not like missiles sent to gun kill. They're like defensive missiles put in the ground. Anybody that comes to kill you, what happens? The missiles, the, the, the bomb, the mines, will handle them. And that's what I do. So, I don't keep quiet. Because when you they say silence means consent. When I know somebody is coming after me, I put mines. I create a minefield around me. So, if truly you fulfill your, <laughs> your promise or your threat, what you see is what is what you get. But when I'm doing that, I'll be loving you. I'll be praying for you. I'll be doing good to you. And that is my balance to that scripture. The second part of the prophetic kind of prayer is what I call commanded prayers. Jesus said in Mark 11 verse 23, If whosoever shall say to this mountain, this is so important. At times we are petitioning God instead of speaking to the mountain. And this is one place a lot of people are missing it. They are praying armies. They are petitioning God instead of speaking to the mountain. There are two kinds of prayers that God will never do anything about. The first is when you ask God to do what he has already done. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's like asking the university that you graduated from that have given your certificates to graduate you 10 years after. Doesn't make sense. You've graduated. You've done the ceremony. You've gotten your certificate. Why are you asking me again to graduate? Say, no, but I didn't graduate. But they say, but you did. We've got the records. We even have your signature saying that you collected the certificate. 
So when you ask God to do the things that he has already done, he will just be looking at you and he's wondering, what is wrong with this, my child? What are you saying? What are you on about? You will never receive the answer to that prayer. Not because God will not answer you because he has already answered you, but you have refused to go and collect the answer. The second kind is asking God, is rather asking, yes, asking God to do the things he has asked you to do. God does not do that, that delegation. He will not ask you to do something and come and do it for you. He won't do that. So at times, the things we need to do, we are going back again to God to ask God to do it. When Jesus says, speak to that mountain, speak to that mountain. When Jesus says, cast out that devil, cast out that devil. Don't say, Father, come and cast out the devil. He will never, ever cast out the devil. Do you know why? He took the power that was given him after he resurrected and he was coronated in heaven. He said, all power has been given to me. He took that power and gave it to us. So he can't do anything because you have the power to do it. So anytime you see the enemy, Satan, playing around in your family, in your business, in your relationship, do something about it. Don't go to God. Don't petition God. Do something about it. So that is that commanded prayer I'm talking about. Do something about it. That is in Matthew 17 verse 20. Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you shall say, you shall say to this mountain, don't come to me. Speak to that problem. Speak to that challenge you are being faced with. Talk to it. Command it in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says it will move. And says, nothing shall be impossible for you. <laughs> for you. Unto you. 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 You didn't say in that scripture that nothing shall be impossible unto God. So, in, but speaking with this knowledge and faith in God, nothing shall be impossible for you. For you. So that means you have to speak to the mountain. You have to speak to that devil. You have to speak to that challenge. And you will experience and start living in the realm of impossibilities. Oh, glory be to God. The third part of this prophetic prayer, what I call hybrid prayer, where you mix the imprecation and the commanded together. Together. When you are demanding justice over something, but you now speak to something to ensure that justice comes. I'll just give you a good example in Jeremiah 22. There are some evil men that God needed to handle. So he told his prophet Jeremiah to speak to the earth. So he was speaking to earth, part of the things that God created, and he was coding in that earth. Now you begin to understand what, what, what I what, when I talked about uh, building a defense round about myself and I use the minefield as an example. I put in earth <laughs> those um, uh, bombs that if you come and attack me, you detonate it. What you see is what you get. So see what Prophet Jeremiah said. He said, oh earth. So he spoke to earth and he coded in the earth minds against the, that man. So oh earth, earth, hear ye the word of the Lord Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Oh, my time, my time, my time is fast spent. I need to rush. I'm on number nine. Number nine is the prayer of inquiry. The prayer of inquiry, this is so important. Whenever I think of the prayer of inquiry, I always think of David. David mastered this prayer. David always went to God to ask, to inquire of God of what to do at any point in time. This is so important. 
in the Old Testament, when those people, God's people, they are not saved. They didn't have the Holy Ghost living in them. They were not. Um, they are not temples of the Holy Spirit. They needed somebody else that had the Holy Spirit upon them to direct them. So they always go to the prophet, the priest, and ask for direction. They always inquire from the prophet or the priest. If the prophet or the priest will go, use the two dice, they call the Urim and the Turim, and cast that, they call it casting lot. They cast the lot, then from that lot, they will interpret what they think or perceive that God is saying. So they depended on external guidance. But it's not so for us today. We should not behave like the Old Testament saints that did not have the right equipment. But for us, we do have the right equipment now. And that equipment is God himself, via the Holy Spirit, that lives on our inside. I would say that anyone that is led, directed by this Spirit, living on your inside, that you are the child, the son, the daughter of God. So when we go in our closet, we need to inquire from the Holy Spirit what to do. What to do? We ask the Holy Spirit what to do. In the Old Testament, it depended on prophets, like I said. There was a time Ahab wanted to go and fight and um, got the king of Judah to come fight with him, Joseph. Joseph had been, I mean, man that had been trained and taught by his father. said, hey, don't you have any prophet here that we can inquire before we go? You know, of course, uh, Ahab had prophets that were in his pocket. That if you know the backstory, that... Um, in heaven, the council was called and God needed a lying spirit. One came out and said, hey, let me go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophet of Ahab so we can entice him to go for this battle. And of course, those prophets told Ahab, go, you win, this will happen, blah, 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 blah. Joseph said, isn't there any prophet here? To that guy and get a prophet of God that spoke the truth. Even though he spoke the truth, they still went for that battle. And of course, Ahab died in that battle. I said this to let you know that in the Old Testament, it depended on external counsel. But for us, we need to depend on God. But like I said, one man in the Old Testament that went to God direct is David. You see that in 1 Samuel 23 verse 2. The half time. You see another in 2 Samuel 21 verse 1. Please go home and read those scriptures. The tenth kind of prayer is praying in the Spirit. I've already run a series on the Holy Spirit, so go and listen to it. I talked a lot about praying in the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is praying in the Spirit. But praying in the Spirit is not limited to speaking in tongues alone. I'll say it again. Speaking in tongues is praying in the Spirit. But praying in the Spirit is not limited to speaking in tongues alone. What do I mean by that? You can pray in the Spirit in your understanding. What does it mean to pray in the Spirit? It just simply means praying under the influence, the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. The Bible says that for the Old Testament saint, Elisha, a man with like passion, and I must say this, he could not speak in tongues. He could not. He could not. But a man of like passion and love prayed fervently and effectually. Meaning he prayed with tremendous power of an anointing of the Spirit that it should not rain. And it did not rain for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, that one the Bible recorded in Kings, that it should rain. And it now rained. The prophet Elijah prayed in the Spirit, but he didn't speak in tongues. He prayed in his understanding. Because of time, this is where I won't go further into that. But I do that. The eleventh one I'm going to talk to you about is the prayer of confession. That's the last one. It's eleven, but if you add the two subs of the prophetic prayer, it becomes thirteen. It's a prayer of confession. The Bible says, "Confessing our sins one to another, so that we'll be healed." That's if you trespass against your brother. 
But if you, if you committed a sin against God, you need to go confess that sin to God and ask him to forgive you. I mean, uh, if you have questions on this, please leave them in the comment section. We'll make our time maybe next Tuesday to talk about it. I will want to answer your prayer, your questions, because I need you to understand these different kinds of prayers so that you can deploy them effectively this coming year so you will get answers to all your prayers.